Esme's Umbrella logo. Hello, my name is Judith Potts and I am the founder of Esme's Umbrella, which is the charity to raise awareness of a condition called Charles Bonnet syndrome. Charles Bonnet syndrome occurs when someone of any age has lost over 60% of sight. It causes vivid, silent, visual hallucinations, which range from disturbing to terrifying. It's very important to remember that this is not a mental health condition, but caused entirely by loss of sight. The kind of hallucinations which people experience can be very simple ones like blobs of color, patterns, grids, all the way through to animals, birds, insects, and people. When someone sees the image of a human being, that image is usually wearing a costume of some kind, military or medieval, Edwardian. My own mother, the Esme of Esme's Umbrella, saw an Edwardian street child who followed her everywhere. Now let me hand you over to Professor Dominic Fitch of King's College London. Professor Fitch is the world authority on Charles Bonnet syndrome. Thank you, Judith. So I'm um, Professor Dominic Fitch. I'm Professor of Visual Psychiatry at King's College London, and I run a specialist clinic for visual hallucinations and Charles Bonnet syndrome here. So visual hallucinations are seeing something that's not really there, has lots of different causes, um, and when it's eye disease, that's where we reserve this term, Charles Bonnet syndrome. So uh, you can get visual hallucinations in other conditions like Parkinson's disease. You can get them uh, in a range of different types of, of dementias. Um, but that's different to what we mean by Charles Bonnet syndrome, uh, where you uh, are mentally absolutely intact. You've just got eye disease and that's triggering the hallucinations. So, so one way of thinking about this is like uh, phantom limbs that, that you may be familiar with, where you use a limb and you have the sense of, of, of the limb sting, still being there. Well, it's like that in the visual system. So the brain cells are firing off when they shouldn't be, and they're giving you this illusion of something being out there in the world when it isn't really. And we know from brain scanning experiments that this is all to do with parts of the brain that we, we normally use for vision, so seeing colours or faces or, or objects in front of us, these bits are firing off and, and when they do spontaneously, uh, it gives you a sense of, of seeing a face or seeing a colour or seeing a pattern out there when there's actually nothing there. So it's important to realise that any eye condition can cause Charles Bonnet syndrome as long as it's causing a moderate degree of visual loss. And, and what I mean by that is if you go to the, the opticians and you can't read sort of halfway down the chart, then, then you're at risk of having uh, Charles Bonnet syndrome. And you can think of it as a normal response of the brain to loss of visual input. And, and if you're a normal sighted person and you wear a blindfold for long enough, you'll start to have Charles Bonnet syndrome hallucinations. An important message for us all is that there is treatment for Charles Bonnet syndrome. And for many people, that's just simple things like knowing about it, knowing that it's linked to your eye problem and that chances are it's going to improve over time. It may not go away entirely. Uh, and then there are various tricks that people learn how to stop hallucinations when they're occurring. So that doesn't cure the Charles Bonnet syndrome, but it gives you some control over it. So that could be eye movements, it could be changing the lighting uh, or distracting yourself. Um, the hallucinations tend to come when you're uh, sort of sitting comfortably not doing very much, not, not dozing off necessarily, but sort of not particularly active. And if you, if you get up and do something um, to alert yourself, that can sometimes stop the hallucinations. Um, but that, of course, is not enough for everyone. There is about a third of people with Charles Bonnet syndrome who need more help. And uh, there are various uh, medications um, that can be tried to help Charles Bonnet syndrome. Um, they tend to differ for individuals, so some people a certain type of medication will work and it, it won't work for others. Um, and they tend to all um, be aiming to reduce this excitability in the visual parts of your brain. So 
drugs that we use to treat epilepsy, for example, um, help Charles Bonnet syndrome. That doesn't mean to say you've got epilepsy, but the, the medication helps. And similarly, anti-dementia drugs, which act on a, on a brain chemical that we use in vision, they can help Charles Bonnet syndrome, even if you haven't got dementia, nothing to do with dementia, but the medications can still help. Um, and a, an important new type of uh, approach is electrical treatment. And in fact, we've just published a study showing that if you use uh, uh, electrical stimulation on the back of your head where the visual parts of your brain are that dampens down this activity that can help reduce uh, Charles Bonnet syndrome hallucinations without any of the side effects that you, you might get by taking medication. What research would we like to happen? We've had lots of surveys of Charles Bonnet syndrome. We know quite a lot now about the different types of hallucinations. We're getting a better sense of how common it is. So we don't really need that type of research at the moment. What we need quite urgently is uh, treatment trials. So as I mentioned, a lot of this evidence that we have is based on a few people that tried a particular medication and it worked for them, but we don't really know across all of Charles Bonnet syndrome how that works and which is the best type of medication. So there's definitely a need for proper treatment trials where you've got a, a placebo drug that you're comparing it with or comparing two different types of drugs to see which one is better. And in terms of understanding the brain mechanism behind Charles Bonnet syndrome, we know a lot about it, but the big thing that we don't know is why only some people get it. So a very important take home message is that uh, Charles Bonnet syndrome is, a, is essentially a normal response of the brain to visual loss. It hasn't got any wide implications about mental health issues or um, about early dementia uh, in, in people of a certain age. It is important to as well to know that the uh, hallucinations tend to improve over time. We used to say that your hallucinations will all go away within 18 months, but unfortunately we now know that's not the case, that they last for much longer in most people, but that's not to say they're there at the same intensity. So it could be that uh, when you start to have your hallucinations, you're having it all the time, every day, and then gradually you'll have a sort of uh, an episode every week or so, and then every month, and it will gradually get shorter and shorter. So it's certainly not um, the case that, that, that hallucinations will be there uh, as a problem in the longer term. And it's also important to know that life stresses um, can flare up the hallucinations, um, lack of sleep and, and, and um, sort of non-specific things like that can make your Charles Bonnet syndrome worse. So techniques that help avoid those sort of things or, or uh, generally reduce stress can also help Charles Bonnet syndrome. Well, I hope this has been in informative and um, that I've answered some of the questions about Charles Bonnet syndrome and I'm going to hand back to Judith now. Thank you, Dominic. For centuries, since 1760, when Charles Bonnet first documented what was happening to his grandfather, there has been no support at all. But now we have Esme's Friends groups, which are conducted on the telephone, online, face-to-face, -face, and sometimes hybrid. These allow people with Charles Bonnet syndrome to come together to exchange their experience because it's different for everyone, and to find coping strategies just to help them through. These strategies can be found on my website, along with all sorts of other information. Please visit www.charlesbonnetsyndrome.uk. That's spelt C-H-A-R-L-E-S-B-O-N-N-E t s y n d r o m e dot u k it's very sad to think that for so long people were too afraid that they were developing a mental health condition to tell anybody we now know that if someone whose sight is diminishing receives a warning that charles bonnet syndrome might appear, they can then recognize that first hallucination for what it is and not think that they are developing a mental health condition, the outcome is so much better. 
Talking to others who have the same condition is hugely helpful. So we have the ESMI's friends groups, we have counsellors. Retina UK has a buddy scheme and the Macular Society offers counselling. So there is help out there. At the moment, that's about it. But there is research which has begun at various universities, including Oxford. And we hope that once we know a little bit more about the condition, we will be able to find better ways to support people and a proper pathway for diagnosis, treatment and support. When I launched Esme's Umbrella, one of my aims was to persuade the World Health Organization that this condition should be noted not just as a side effect of sight loss, but as a condition in its own right. And I'm very happy to say that with the help of Professor Andrew Dick here in the UK and Dr. August Kohlenbrander in the USA, we have achieved that. So now Charles Bonnet syndrome has its own coding in the World Health Organization's taxonomy of diseases and conditions called ICD-11. For the Retina UK helpline, call 0300 111 To contact the Macular Society, dial 0300 30 30 111.